boat break is heading on a trip today, we are going to the Isle of Thanet, which is not actually an island at all, it's just the most easterly point of Kent, but it is surrounded by sea, and a bit of sea air is exactly what I need today. And the whole area also has loads of fab literary connections, Jane Austen and Charles Dickens spent a lot of time there, for example, and to make it all even better, I'm going to be joined on my trip by Lauren on the books, and we're going exploring. Let's go! Look who I found! Hi! It's Lauren on the books! And we are now here in Margate. Beautiful sunny day. Dreamland, which Dreamland. you can see over there where I spent my eighth birthday. It's my first day back since. <laughs> and we are here on a mission. We're gonna go and find the new Margate bookshop. This gorgeous new independent bookshop. And to get there, we're gonna walk along the beach, which oh, is gonna be lovely. lovely. Little paddle. Oh yeah. <laughs> So we're now here at the Nayland Rock Shelter, which, as we just learned, is where T.S. Eliot sat right here, maybe on this seat, <laughs> maybe not. I think it was this seat. Might have been your seat. <laughs> and wrote part of The Wasteland, a few lines that are actually about Margate. So this is what he said. On Margate Sands, I can connect nothing with nothing. The broken fingernails of dirty hands, my people, humble people, who expect nothing beautiful we're not sure what it means inspiration <laughs> it's about this view john betjeman also came here not to this shelter but to margate and wrote a poem called margate 1940 and it was while he was fighting in the war about remembering like the seaside holidays that he used to have here and that one says the poem finishes with the lines and I think, as the fairy lit sights I recall, it is those we're fighting for foremost of all. That's lovely. That's really nice, isn't lovely. it? Now that we're on the beach, have you read the book? Last Orders by Graham Swift. No. No, me neither. But, <laughs> but I'm now going to now that we've been here. Cool. So it's about a group of friends who, after one of their friends dies, he lives in London, they all meet up because their friend's last wishes were to have his ashes scattered in the sea at Margate. So the book is about their journey from London oh, to Margate. To we should have read it on the train! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so we made the journey, now this is where they came. You can see why, because it is, you know, it's very pretty. Very pretty. And I think at the time there was also a pier. There used to be like oh. a pier there until the 70s when it got ruined in the storm. So it would have looked pretty gorge. So now we have to read the book. Yes, definitely. This is the scene you can picture if you read it at the end. That was a lovely it Margate bookshop. so book lovely, shop. so lovely. Oh, so glad we went there. And there's one more bookshop that we saw on the way we're just gonna pop into, which is in an old bank building. Yes. Okay, so we're back at the station, hopping on our next train to go to Broadstairs. And we're in Broadstairs. So this is Charles Dickens' territory. Exciting. He called it our English watering place. Oh, beautiful. And he wrote a little quote about Broadstairs that said, you cannot think how delightful and fresh the place is and how good the walks. So we're gonna go on a walk and, and have, have a delightful little... and fresh time. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this behind us here is the Royal Albion Hotel, which is where Charles Dickens stayed when he was writing Nicholas Nickleby. And apparently he spent a lot of time in the bar there as oh, well. Oh, lovely. Lovely the vistas and views. Oh yeah, got all this inspiration. And right next to it, we have the Charles Dickens Museum. So this was originally a house, and the woman who lived here was friends with Charles Dickens. He used to come here for tea, I think. Um, and he named, or he based the character of Betsy Trotwood in David Copperfield after her. And Betsy Trotwood is this really funny character who's a complete man hater and she storms out when David's born because she didn't want to be the godparent to a boy she wanted a girl but she does then take him in and look after him so I think she's actually a really great character sounds good to me yeah let's have a look around Thank you. 
So having learned everything there is to know about Charles Dickens, everything. literally everything, <laughs> we've now come to possibly the original Bleak House. This place is now called Bleak House. And they do yoga here now. And they do yoga here now, <laughs> which is very authentic, Charles Dickens. When he, he definitely stayed here a lot. So he definitely knew this place. It was originally called Fort House and a lot of people believe that he based Bleak House on it. So whether or not it's true, I'm sticking to it. And it's an impressive house. looking building. Oh yeah, it looks lovely. And that's the view. <laughs> Of the sea! So you probably looked out of one of those windows up there. In between yoga sessions. In between yoga sessions. <laughs> <laughs> and we're playing girls. Alright, I think it's time for some lunch on the yes. beach. Yes. Instagramming your lunch. Yeah. Also in Broadstairs is the North Foreland Lighthouse. Lovely. Which we're not going to go to because it's oh. pretty far away. But mm. while we're sitting here, I'm going to tell you three facts about it. Fact number one. <laughs> okay. George Bernard Shaw applied to be the lighthouse keeper there. Wow. He didn't get the job. Oh. Fact number two. Yeah. Wilkie Collins one day was looking at the North Foreland Lighthouse yeah. when he got the idea of the name the woman in white. I guess it looks like a woman in white. Right. It, we wouldn't know, we haven't seen we it. We wouldn't know because it's too <laughs> far away. Fact number three. Yeah. John Buchan used to come here. Right. And it was by the lighthouse. In front of the lighthouse to get down to the beach, there were 39 steps. Actually, that's not true. There aren't 39 <laughs> steps. There are some steps. Yeah. There is a number of steps. And he was watching his daughter go down the steps and count the steps when he got the idea for the name. 39, 39 steps. steps. So if we had gone there, we might have got an idea of a book title because everyone else does. Yeah. But we're not going to. Never mind. We had lovely away. vegan chicken nuggets though. Oh, we did. <laughs> and they were delicious. And now we've just got one more stop to go. We're off to Ramsgate. Lovely. We're here at our final stop. This is Ramsgate. Lovely place. So Ramsgate, Jane Austen had strong feelings about. She thought that it was Right, quite a saucy area. She thought that the sea air loosens people's morals, and yeah. you can tell if you read her books. Like it's always in Ramsgate where someone gets to juice and yeah. stuff. Happens. Run away too. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? She might actually have been right because Wilkie Collins lived a double life in Ramsgate. So this <laughs> blue flag behind us here, this is one of the places that he lived with his housekeeper, oh, Caroline yeah. Graves. But now we're going to go and find another blue plaque, find out what else he was up to. Hello. Scandal. Let's go. Okay, so we walked not very far away. Not too far. Naughty Wilkie Collins also lived in this house under the fake name Mr. Dawson with his 19 year old baby mama Martha. I did not know that, Wilkie. I know, scandal. So there it is. So I guess Jane Austen was right. She it's actually did. a Loosened wicked you up. place in Ramsgate. So that was Ramsgate, the Lovely. scandals of Ramsgate. It's still quite wholesome though. I think Samuel Taylor Coleridge used to come here oh, yeah. to get sea air and relax and he calls There's it- There's plenty of that here. There's plenty of that. He called it Ramsgatizing, which is his <laughs> <laughs> way of chilling out. Well, thank you so much Thanks for Lauren, having me. I had a great time. Channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave a comment if you've been to any of these places. And of course, hit that subscribe button below for new videos every Thursday. Coming up next week, we are talking about hidden gems, but that you might not have heard of. There's I'm looking forward really to that. good ones coming up. And you can always follow us on Instagram while you're waiting at Bookrate UK. See you next time. Bye.